Hi, it's Miss Michelle. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday. I know it was probably different than it has been in the past, but hopefully you still enjoyed some good food and, and got to either see your family via Zoom or maybe um, actually got to spend some time with some of them. So hope everybody's doing well. Um, so today, you know, this coming Sunday um, is the first Sunday in Advent, which is a, which is a season known as um, preparation. Um, a time to prepare ourselves for the birth of Jesus. Um, and so um, how a lot of us try to prepare ourselves for Christmas is what I think a lot of people think about right now. Um, what are some things that you might be preparing yourself for in the coming weeks? Um, especially things that might not have anything to do with Christmas itself, but like, what else do you have to prepare yourself for? Um, and it's a time of waiting, um, which most of us aren't really good at. Most of us aren't very patient. Um, so what are some things you could be doing as we're waiting in anticipation for the birth of Jesus? Um, what does that look like? So this week, though, um, we're going to do highs and lows and talk about a nickname you have that you were given and why you were giving that nickname. So for me, as a kid, I was given a nickname called Buster. Um, I was with some of my second and third cousins. We are um, visiting my um, great aunt and um, hanging out, playing some card games, and they taught me um, the game of 21. And so we were playing, but I kept busting. And so they referenced and said, bust her, and then it just became a thing, and it became Buster. So that became my name because I kept doing terrible at the game and kept busting. And so I kept that nickname, and I kept using it even throughout um, junior high and high school because um, I thought it was kind of a fun name that cousins that I hadn't seen were really met ever again kind of gave to me so it was a lot of fun so share your nickname what is the nickname you've had and what why were you given it was there a special reason for that so our story from today is in Isaiah and so Isaiah um, in this time is when the Israelites are is been overtaken by one of the many different other people whether it's Babylonians or Assyrians um, who have captured them and have are holding them hostage at this point. And so they don't get to be free in a lot of ways. So they are, um, so they're kind of stuck. Um, and, but what's happening is, is that it's a really hard time for them. They're not getting to possibly worship the way that they're used to. They're not able to worship in their sanctuary. They're what they would call their temple, um, which I think a lot of us might be able to understand that feeling because many of you have not been able to come and worship at church in a long time. Um, they were in a an, in this time of not being in their home place, um, and so they didn't know what was going to happen next, and all of this. And so they they just were down in the dumps and like really upset about what could be happening to them and the un uncertainty of what was to come. And so Isaiah comes and tells them, look. God is still with us and God is going to do something amazing for us. And you are going to find that And the sign for this is that a virgin is going to have a child and that child is the God's son. And so, and he predicts Jesus's birth. And so this is the foretelling of what's to come. Now, when Isaiah predicted this and when it actually happens is a good Four, 800 somewhere in there years between and so the Israelites have to wait a really really long time for this prophecy to come true but it eventually does come true and that's what we'll be talking about in the next couple weeks but this verse is usually used as one of the first texts for the first week in Advent to remind us that God is always with us so um, it says that Emmanuel will be here which Emmanuel itself means God with us so Emmanuel. So when we sing the songs with Emmanuel in them during Christmas time, um, come Emmanuel, um, we are saying, come God, be with us. We want you to be with us, which is what Jesus was. Jesus was part of that. And so think about what it kind of makes me think about though right now and, and preparing and anticipation and the waiting um, that we do for Jesus's birth is even right now, we're in a waiting game in our lives. Uh, we're waiting for a vaccine. 
to help us to be able to be able to go back to somewhat moral, normal lives. We're anticipating what that's going to look like. A lot of us are anxious for 2020 to be over and ready for the next new year to happen. Um, and so there's a lot of that that we kind of can really relate to what the Israelites were going through in some ways. It's different, but it's still similar. Um, and so how does that, how are you feeling right now? How are you looking forward and um, preparing for Christ's coming? Um, what does that look like for you? Our other questions for today are, um, what, where do you find hope? Because God is hope. This was the hope that um, was going to give the Israelites. It was showing them that there is still something coming better for them. And so this was a hope that was there for them. So what is some hope that you have? What is bringing hope into your life? And how do you bring hope? How can you maybe bring hope into somebody else's life during this time? Well, let us say a prayer together. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for being Emmanuel, God with us. Help us as we are in anticipation and waiting for your son to be born again. And for what that means for us. Um as we prepare during this Advent season for this Christmas season. Help us to find the hope and to be the hope for those around us. In your, in your name we pray. Amen. Well, I look forward to hearing our conversation this week. I hope everyone has a healthy and safe week, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.